if you want to know the latest news about new archaeological discoveries or human evolution or anything to do with ancient inventions, ancient queens, ancient structures, then subscribe to the channel for weekly videos. I usually upload twice, sometimes more, and I do the occasional live stream, so click that bell icon. What would you look like if your mother was a Neanderthal and your father was a Denisovan? Would you look more like Neanderthals or would you look more like the Denisovans? Or would it be like a 50-50 split in your appearance? Would you be treated differently? Would you... How would you be treated? Would you be seen as different or would you just be accepted as being part of both communities? What would your identity be? Of course, as you can imagine, <laughs> we won't actually be able to answer these questions, but thankfully there are many things that we do know about the world's only known first generation hybrid. So my name is Kaylee and in today's video we're going to take a look into all that we know about Denny, the world's only known first generation Neanderthal Denisovan hybrid. I mean, it's there. <laughs> so before we jump into Denny and everything that we know about her, we need to recap a bit for those seeing me for the first time. The Denisova cave is situated in the Altai Mountains in Siberia, in Russia. In this cave, archaeologists have discovered the fossilized remains of three species of archaic humans, the Neanderthals, the Denisovans and Homo sapiens. If you have seen my Who Were the Denisovans video, uh, thumbnail right here, highly recommend checking it out, you remember me mentioning a Denisovan Neanderthal hybrid named Denny. Her fossilized bone fragment was discovered in 2012 in the Denisova cave. At first, her bone was just kept alongside 2,000 other nondescript bone fragments from the cave, all ready for later identification. So for about four years, her bone fragment was stored among the other fragments until 2016 when Samantha Brown, who was a student at the University of Oxford at the time, identified the bone to belong to a hominin. A hominin that lived approximately 90,000 years ago. Samantha Brown has since been a part of many studies surrounding the Denisova cave and the Denisovans, including their tools and cultural adaptation. And I've been trying to get a hold of her to interview her here on the channel about her work, but so far I've not been lucky yet. So maybe someone who knows her that sees this video will pass that message along. <laughs> that would be lovely. And of course I will DM her on Twitter and tweet at her because I really want her on the channel because she's an expert in the field. But back to the topic at hand. So after they discovered that the bone fragment belonged to a hominin, they were able to determine that it belonged to a young female of approximately 13 years of age. And they decided to test the fragment for DNA, which they did in 2018. This was done at the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology. So the reason that they chose this specific location was because it was here that they had isolated and sequenced Denisovan DNA in the past. So as you can imagine, this was the perfect place to do DNA analysis to see if the bone fragment could possibly belong to a Denisovan. First, they tested the fragment for mitochondrial DNA, which showed the wonderful conclusion that the person to which this bone fragment belonged to had a fully Neanderthal mother. What I failed to mention in the past in past videos is that mitochondrial DNA and nuclear DNA differ on one major thing. Where nuclear DNA is inherited from both parents, mitochondrial DNA is only inherited from the mother. This is also the biggest reason as to why the results from mitochondrial DNA and nuclear DNA analysis can differ so much. Because when the parents are, for instance, a Neanderthal and Denisovan, you get extremely different results. So as I just mentioned, the mitochondrial DNA from the bone fragment showed that this 13-year-old girl 
was the daughter of a full Neanderthal mother. So after testing the mitochondrial DNA, they decided to test the nuclear DNA. And the nuclear DNA analysis on the bone fragment revealed that the father of the girl was a Denisovan. Of course, in the nuclear DNA, they found traces of Neanderthal as well, but just as I explained just now, nuclear DNA is inherited from both parents. So that's why they did find Neanderthal DNA in the nuclear DNA analysis. So the researchers were able to figure out that the Neanderthal DNA from the mother was genetically closer to that of Western European Neanderthals, especially when compared to the earlier Neanderthals that lived in the area of the Denisova cave. This suggests that there has been a migration in the past, before 90,000 years ago, of Western European Neanderthals to the area of the Denisova cave in central Eurasia, at least tens of thousands of years before the Neanderthals disappeared. This is something that we had no clue about. This bone fragment has been the first piece of evidence for a first generation person of mixed ancestry, an actual hybrid of two distinct species or lineages or whatever you like to call it. We've been over that a couple times now. This shows that the hypothesis for hybridization or interbreeding, I mean, what's up with all these different terms for things? Just call it one thing, but yeah, no. This shows that the hypothesis for interbreeding has a lot more weight to it than previously thought. Now, we know that humans living in modern times can have up to 4% Neanderthal DNA, and that some groups of humans can have up to 5% Denisovan DNA. That in itself shows that interbreeding happened on quite a big scale. Otherwise, we wouldn't have these high percentages some 35,000 years after both species or lineages went extinct. Up until the 1970s, human evolution was seen as linear. One straight line from ancestor to us modern humans in modern times. But after the 1970s, this view was slowly but surely abandoned, especially now in the 21st century, where we have the technology brought forth by computers and molecular biology. Whole genome sequencing of Neanderthal and the human genome confirmed the interbreeding between the two species or lineages. And since 2010, it has been evident that interbreeding occurred independently on several occasions between Neanderthals Denisovans, Homo sapiens, and several unidentified hominins. Several unidentified hominins. That last part, the several unidentified hominins, is something that I will look into in the future, and hopefully as time goes by, we can reveal more and more about them and maybe identify them one day, because they are currently unidentified hominins. We have gaps in our human evolution. So to think that this particular bone fragment laid between approximately 2,000 other fragments for about four years after it was discovered, until it was analyzed and found to belong to a hominin, that eventually led to the discovery of the first ancient archaic first generation 50-50 Neanderthal Denisovan hybrid is just absolutely incredible. This does scream, we need more genetic studies to not only this fragment, but other bone fragments as well. We also know that interbreeding between archaic human species or lineages was the rule and not the exception. This most likely played a massive role in the evolution of us, modern humans. The rule, not the exception as they thought for a very, very long time. So in January 2019, it was discovered that several types of humans, including Denisovans, Neanderthals and hybrids, lived in and around the Denisova cave for thousands of years. Although it is unclear if they ever lived there at the same time. They might have well replaced each other continuously. But of course, the existence of Denny as a first-generation hybrid points to simultaneous occupation of Denisovans and Neanderthals for at least a short time 
around 90,000 years ago. Because otherwise, why would a Neanderthal woman and a Denisova man do things if they didn't live there at the same time? <laughs> but as you can imagine, research into the hominins living in this area is by far not done, and I am excited to see what the future will bring. Will we find more hybrids? Will we one day be able to identify the unknown hominins that we have found to have left traces in our modern human genome? Only time will tell, and I have absolute faith in these researchers that they one day will discover the evidence. And I hope that you feel the same way, because these researchers are absolutely doing incredible work that we need to support and take serious. And if you do know Samantha Brown, reach out to her, tell her about this video, tell her that I want to interview her on my channel. Because I feel like we need to give an opportunity for these experts to tell us, viewers and, I mean, just people passionate about history, what they know. Like, share the knowledge with us. And I will let you talk and I will not cut into you whenever you're telling something, because I've shown with that with Professor Alberg that if you speak, I will give you all the space you need, because I just want to listen to everything that you know. But with that said, if you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos and click that bell icon if you want to be notified every single time I upload with the occasional out of the blue live stream. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then click the card in the upper right corner or one of the links in the description down below or click a video in the end card. I would like to say a massive thank you to everyone supporting me on Patreon and my channel members. Eternally grateful, but I think by now that you do know how I feel about this. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. I'm still amazed by the fact that I can say mitochondrial DNA without absolute hesitation or struggles, but I said homeo sapiens. I'm still amazed by myself. Am I that dumb? <laughs>